here, I'm going to do a long version of how to warp to another universe uh, and do it fairly quickly. So I go to the map maker. You'll need to have navigation maps to do this. They have a picture of a maps on the wall. And uh, after you go to the map maker, you select exchange specific charts. You want the alien cartographic data. So other videos, I think they get about 10 of these. So let's grab about 10 of them. I have like 20 navigation charts. I just pick them up as I go along and hold on to them. They're not worth that much as compared to other stuff anyway. And they're, they're useful for different things. Like if you're stuck somewhere, you can use a navigation to call your ship. Um, I fixed my photon cannon, my shields, my hyperdrive. I need to fix the cadmium drive. Uh, I should probably get two wiring looms to fix that. Because wiring looms are, you can only buy them anyway. And uh, you pretty much have to have your cadmium drive when you uh, warp, I think. So, <clears throat> demand minus 8.1. Let's grab two of them. And so that when we're ready to fix the cadmium drive, we have the wiring looms. If you want to see, the two wiring looms are right here. I'm going to stick them in my cargo. All right. I'm sorry. Go to tab. And uh, if I can find the maps I just bought here, eat a plot route. Alien artifact detected. So I use E to tag it. Space bar to warp. This is a nuclear planet, so you'll need radioactive shielding on a nuclear planet. I'm going to land between the glowing yellow All right, and since we have that glowing yellow there, I'll grab a few of these sodiums. It's free, so, and usually the um, sentinels, when you use E, as long as you don't have your laser out, they don't seem to uh, make a big deal. I pretty much pick up items as I do things, as I see them. Same thing with scanning. If I have something nearby that's unscanned, uh, usually I try and grab it.
I see the red dots that move around, those are animals. And they tend to be worth more when you scan them. All right, there's one. See, with my upgrades, I have 160,000 units from that. Okay, so let's see what this alien monolith is about. I have only one radiation shielding, so when that rent runs out, I need to refill it. Also, if you see hazardous flora, You see my numbers are going up while I sit here and scan. And I'm going to replace the battery while I'm here too. The ion battery. So part of the process of, as you go from system to system, in my opinion, if you want to do it fairly quickly, is you pick up resources as they're nearby and available. Okay. So I said that I would replace the radiation shielding. I don't use the uranium because it takes uranium to fix the qu uh, quantum dose modulator, which is radiation protection. I don't want to use the wiring looms because I we got them for something else. So, E to use the thing. Strange writings form upon the stone Revealing secrets from the time of the Viking ancients. How I understand them, I do not know. Herc foresaw the weakness of the Viking warrior kind. The star ascent of our noble race was blocked by the weak-minded sentinels. Nine times ninefold, Herc commanded we would have our vengeance and dashed the metal demons against the rocks of damnation. That sounds almost religious. Let's uh, seek help with language. My knowledge of the Viking increases. And notice my standing improved. Now, I put the dot over this and I can't do anything. So I use Z, I put my signal booster down. Where is my signal booster? Up in the air, okay. E to use it. Locate nearby structures. I'm just doing, uh, why I just did that, I don't know. I guess it's habit. Three hundred and four thousand. Okay. Actually, what we should be using is the planetary chart E. Alien artifact detected. So let's highlight that and go to it. is 101,000. Uh, you use escape and F to upload. 
Oh yeah, I don't have a launch recharger. Because I didn't repair that. If you use C to scan, you can see where there's hydrogen at. Uh, I bet you it's up above here. Come to think of it, if I use uranium, I could use that as launch fuel if I, if I mine the uranium. But grab a little replacement dihydrogen here. I believe you need a metal plate when you make launch fuel. Won't turn down a little ferrite and a little bit of uranium. Some sodium. And I don't believe I have that animal. See, I've got four out of eight species just in this area scanning whatever comes available while I'm doing stuff. Quite possible in the process of doing this, I will be able to get all the species and the bonuses that go with that, the nanites. All right, the ancient ruin is to the left of the ship. So a metal plate and then 40 dihydrogen uh, makes the launch fuel. The metal plate took 50 ferrite. So I didn't even mine enough ferrite to replace that. Okay, now I'll go up into the outer atmosphere and then warp to the site to do it quicker. The screen will pause when and just before you're far enough into outer space, then the space bar to pulse. Use the pulse engine, I mean, to go there rather than warp. Okay, now we're only 12 seconds or so away from the ancient ruin. So you, we use the alien artifact maps. We go to the different locations they give us. We will eventually get the location of a gate. This is the fastest way to do this. I think one of the fastest. Keep on trying with E to land. You notice it took me three tries. The language things, I use those. Notice it's going back up. While it's doing that, I can go into my exosuit technology where I put one of my, my radiation protections, the one that won't get broken when I warp in, uh, into a, another galaxy. Okay, so E on this, the Viking plaque. The whispers of the Viking ancients fill the air. Suddenly, words etch themselves upon the marker. 
and then deep into my mind. It came to pass that the great monolith awoke. It heard the challenge of Herc. Five times Herc called upon it and was met by silence. On the sixth cry, it awoke. awoke. I do seek help with language because I don't want to spend the time digging for the stuff from the past, even though it's worth more. My knowledge of the Viking increases. All right, notice my standing went up by one. Now I'll go over and see if I can use this again. I can't. So what we will do... How I got up here, I don't know. Anything of interest over here? Now, oh, there's the steps. Uh, we don't get any new animals out of that. Where we put the plane? There. Uranium, copper, cobalt. Uranium, cobalt. Well, there's plenty of cobalt on this planet. Okay, tab, go back to the planetary chart, E to use the chart. Alien artifact detected. F, and then E to tag the uh, ancient plaque. It is located to the left of the front of our ship. So go to the left. I head up into the air to do this quicker. Shift key to go faster than what the W key does. Oh, did I forget my signal booster from the air there? You know what? I lost, an, I think. I keep on forgetting those. Why I took that out, I don't know. I guess that opened up an inventory slot. All right, space bar to uh, pulse. I have about 100 ion batteries. They stack in stacks of 100. So I'm not really worried about running out. Typically, a couple is all you need to do stuff on a planet. I'll slow it down with an S. I think it's on the other side of this. S to make it go slow. So it's another ancient plaque. E to land. E to use the Viking plaque. The imprint of an ancient civilization was once absorbed by this strange marker. The story of the Viking somehow spills out in the language of my own people. The great monolith spoke to Herc of the travelers. 
Their coming should not be met with fire. Their coming was but one dream of an infinite universe. Their reach would be that of the endless. When Herc asked of the sentinels, the great monolith said nothing. Herc was troubled by its silence. I seek help with language. My knowledge of the Viking increases. In another video, I've already shown how to, um, at the ancient ruins, how to do stuff. So I'm not bothering with that. I am going to take a minute and scan whatever's around me. I don't think I have the patience to just spend my time scanning. Now tab and E on the planetary chart. Alien monolith detected. F and E to highlight it. Tab, technology, add another ion battery. Now while we're here, I see there's some dihydrogen. Make sure you have the mining beam on. Uh, he's investigating while we'll walk away. All right, where was our item at? It was to our right. Do this quickly before they come back and grab what we can. Well, we still have some launch fuel, but only 4% left. Where was that thing that... There it is, the monolith. Okay, again, up into the air. So you see... Uh, this method will take less overall time than most of the other methods. But you still have to be patient if you want to warp to another galaxy. Okay. There we go. You saw the pause on the screen? Also, depending on what kind of system you're in, you have to have like a special item for them. Like the Viking effigy or whatever it's called. You'll have to exchange that for the location of your monolith. So it does take a little bit of preparation ahead of time. Now, my launch fuel at 4% is not going to refuel itself. So I'm going to fuel that up before I get out. In case I get into an issue with the Sentinels, the spaceship will be ready to go. 
since I have these knowledge stones, I grab the words for free. Usually there's a third one in the back. Pillars of Zetum. Given Viking, Viking, I feel a strange chill. A layer of frozen gas suddenly coats the monolith from bottom to top. It's so cold that I can see my breath inside my helmet. There is one small gap in the crystal ice, and I feel convinced that I could feed some of my mind elements through it so they can come into contact with the monolith behind. So I have condensed carbon, and the thing is cycling on number one while two and three remain still. So, and often number one is the preferred choice, and often the one that's cycling is the preferred choice, so I'll do that. The frozen gas melts into the atmosphere, and I am rewarded. I learned a word. My standing has improved. Okay. I can do this again. The ancients that inhabit this monolith accept my presence. They will tolerate a request. And I need a Viking dagger in order to use this portal. So I need to find a Viking dagger. So Z, the signal booster. Oh, I did, I did get it, huh? Let's see if we can find a Viking dagger. We'll locate nearby structures. I'm going to leave this save vacant. Well, let's see. What do I have? I have a Viking effigy. I have a Gek relic. Uh, you know, let's leave the save vacant here so we can find it. All right, and let's go looking for a Viking dagger because we can't locate the portal without the Viking dagger. Actually, that beacon there, I think beacons usually will show you where settlements are at. I believe there'll be a star where I left the save beacon. So we're going to have to explore a little bit in order to find a Viking dagger. And that's one reason to keep the various special items for the people on you. Because each of those portal where they tell you where the portals are will ask you for one of those items one of their special items in exchange to know where the portal is at. I left my save beacon there to make it easier to find because I believe there'll be a mark there where my save beacon was left at. Okay, so we're going to explore with the goal of finding a Viking dagger while we're doing that. S to slow yourself down. 
eat a land. What we'll do, we'll look for buildings, we'll look for settlements. See if we can find a Viking dagger at one of those places. And you see that beacon de uh, detected a miner settlement for us. So I'll use the F key and highlight it. Now that settlement is located uh, to the left back of my ship. So left, back, and there it is. In, and it won't be two hours because we'll head up to the outer space. Go from W to shift. There's the pause, I'll point it down, space bar. Now we're hoping either somebody will give us a Viking dagger or that we will find one. That is the goal here. So we're gonna look around the settlement, see if we can come up with a dagger. And I have to replace the, um, the battery. And I'm, I have 98 nion, uh, ion batteries left. So we might be able to buy one. That's probably... I'm not sure if they sell them in the stores. There's a Gek Relic. If we were in a Gek system... Uh, the Gek, a Gek Relic would be a little bit more useful. Uh, the Atlas Pass V1 is good to have. And the navigation data replaces the navigation data that we spent. So we found where we can get a gate at, but we need a Viking dagger. If we can find one in a store or wherever. Whatever this, oh, Gra, honorable Viking, welcomes pathetic coward. He's a pathetic coward. So purchase components. Uh, I don't see a dagger. Let's talk to this guy. Oh, wait. First, grab some nanites. The warrior grabs at my multi-tool, stares at it dismissively, and then starts yapping straight into my face. The yaps turn into slow, hollow barks. They are unimpressed, and dramatically so at that. Interloper, you're pathetic. My, my, and blood, death, death. 
Suddenly a holographic catalog of armaments and attachments appears. The warrior opens their arms wide and embraces me. Alien sales traditions are a curious thing. I can give him 15,000 units for a multi-tool upgrade. All right, I give him 15,000 units. The warrior cheers, embracing me in a hug that nearly crushes my rib cage. They take my units and immediately hand me an upgrade for my multi-tool. I get an S-class scan, uh, scanner and my standing increase. So let's see, where's this S-class scanner? There. So in my multi-tool, I'll move that S-class scanner and you see it broke so uh, let's see to I need a, a, a wiring loom and 40 chromatic metal if I dismantle this, I get a wiring loom and 40 chromatic metal. Therefore, I will dismantle this, what I just got from the guy. I will take the wiring loom that I got from that and repair this one and the chromatic metal. And now my scanner is repaired. But... Um, let me head outside. Let's, we're still looking for a Viking dagger. That's the thing. Those are hard to find. But you can often buy them of, by, uh, from people landing in their ships. That's one place I've seen them at. So if I can find another, a bigger settlement... I may be able to get a dagger. Did I open all of these? I believe I did. Okay, save and chart. Okay, my save beacon is at the monolith. Uh, let's put the signal booster down and let's continue looking for a Viking dagger. I thought I had a Viking dagger somewhere. I don't know what happened. I must have given the Viking dagger at another gate when I was warping. So that, I'm going to guess that's where my dagger went. I'm not even going to bother fixing my guns on on the multi-tool. I'm not planning on fighting if I can avoid it. Now that settlement was, where was it? That's the crash freighter. The trading post is to the left. Front, front left, and I need to put one of those ion batteries I found back in. All right, to the outer space.
If I can go somewhere where there are ships landing, I can talk to the people and trade with them. What happened? Ah. What did I do? Yeah, I think we'll be able to find one here. So if you are patient, uh, you will get rewarded now. Eat a land. When it turns green is when you can land. And we just got an ion battery, which we can put right into our protection. See that ship landing over there? Let's go talk to those people. Somewhere here there'll be a, a Viking dagger for us to get. Gra interloper is something. The warrior makes a bark of acceptance to show their willingness to trade. They prepare their cargo for inspection. Buy items from life form. And there is a Viking dagger for 45000 I'll take one. And we have now got our Viking dagger. It cost us 45000 units. But the bonus is we are ready to head back and we have marked the location with that save beacon. So I believe if we just spin around here. I believe it's this way. F. I think it's over there. Let's get out of here and look. All right, now I have to find my way back to where we were. I thought by leaving my save beacon there would make it a little bit easier. No, this wasn't where we were. What is it? So now, is this where we left the save beacon? Maybe we'll be able to see it from here. This isn't it. Ah, you see that star over there behind where it says monolith? That's There it is, save beacon. All right, we found it. Very good. All right, 
slightly roundabout way to go, but... And in fact, let's get a good good mark of where that is. Um, it is behind the plane. So when I take off, I flip around. And there is the save beacon clearly marked. All right, we are going to be able to find the portal now. All right, sorry, it was a little bit roundabout. Took a few minutes to locate a Viking dagger, but we did it. Now point this down and space bar to warp. Now before I get out of this ship, I'm gonna check my launch fuel again. Probably worthwhile to fix the launch recharger. And we'll need to remember to grab our save beacon back again. We knew we wanted to come back here. Because this is going to tell us where the portal is. Oh, yeah. I said I was going to check the launch fuel, which is at 4%. So metal plating, launch fuel. Okay, we have launch fuel. We have reclaimed our save beacon. Locate portal, the one dagger that we got. There is the symbol for the portal. I will use E to tag it. It is behind the plane. Okay, so we go behind the plane. You can see it uh, on the circle at the top of the screen, a small symbol. And you can also see what I highlighted with the E button. So doing it this way uh, to do the different tasks is an opportunity to explore a little bit and to do a few things in that universe before you go to the next one. I like to look warp to a few systems to get a feel for what type of universe it is because each one has their own slightly uh, uh, different characteristic. Me, I'm looking for a nice galaxy that uh, it not too much fighting, which has a lot of nice planets on it, paradise planets. Okay, eat a land. Eat to go out. Um, If there's stuff available, I take a few minutes and grab it. It's, fr I mean, if it's free, right? Radiation 
I will refill. I just got an ion battery anyway. So that's like a free refill. And we E on this. Now, you have to have found portal glyphs. If you did the Artemis path all the way, you would have gotten it. And now 20 carbon, 20 copper, 20 dihydrogen, 10 sodium, again, 20 carbon, another 20 copper, 20 dihydrogen. So you have to have all these things, 10 sodium, 20 carbon, 20 copper. So copper is uh, 20 dihydrogen. So you need to be sure you have copper. Uh, 10 sodium or sodium nitrate. 20 carbon or 7 condensed carbon or 10 oxygen. Uh, it wants another 11 carbon. 20 copper. 20 dihydro... Whoops. Um, sorry about that. Uh, you can use dihydrogen, deuterium, cobalt, ionized cobalt, or salt here. 20 dihydrogen. And 10 sodium or 4 sodium nitrate. Now one of these I did not put enough in down here. It wants 3 more copper. I could use cadmium, emerald, indium, or activated copper here. Okay. Breach warning, anomaly, containment, failure, imminent. I see the stone of the portal. It's immovable, muted silver, and yet something lurks beneath. It is gray and yet not gray. A crimson calling out from somewhere below its cool surface. I feel as I, if I can hear creatures in the distance. Do they perceive the portal as I do? I activate the portal. I go to the first glyph. It's like wavy lines uh, underneath and a, a one big wavy line like a hill on top. And I'll click that. It's sort of like sun coming over water, I guess. And I'll click it three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve times. The first symbol in any system repeated multiple times. And we run through the portal. So I need, um, I need to fix my cadmium drive before I warp, and I need to switch my multi-tool to a more broken one than the broken one I'm using. <laughs> the one I'm using now is just broken, you know, broken a little bit less. Yeah, a lot of the systems in this one are aggressive fighting. See my ship here? Uh, this is a storm, so let's get out of the storm. And it's cold. Those are information, um, which we call it balls or whatever. People leave a message. Um, it was these, uh, some people traveled to these um, planets that are near the center of the universe. Uh, like this one was done four years ago. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a communication thing myself if it lets me after the storm 
Well, what kind of planet is this? For, uh, so it's cold. The s Sentinels are enforcing. The system is peaceful. All right, well, this is a peaceful system. A lot of the... Oh, and usually a lot of the planets are discovered in these systems. I do have cold protection, I'm sure. Thermal protection. Let's do it. Let's drop a communication thing, even if it's storming out. So I use Z, and I tap communication station. Somebody has Let's Go Brandon here. E, and then I leave a message, and I'll say D gang was here. And you're welcome to see if you can find it. And today is February 3rd. So 2 3 2022. And uh, accept. All right, now we can get off this planet. Let me scan these guys. Now, when we take off, no matter where you go, there you are. That's one person's message. Uh, that's appropriate for No Man's Sky. Best of luck on your travels. Let's go, Brandon. That's, of course, a reference to Joe Biden. Greetings from Hungary. Any other messages? Regan Lier, whatever that means. So you can go look at the messages that people left on the planet. I just put my game name and I put the date that I was there. All right, now, oh, I need to show you, I'm sorry. I need to show you where we are now. So I'll do that in just a second. Let me, um, let me fix this ship. Um, uh, starship. Technology, general. Let's see. The cadmium drive, I have two wiring looms, and I need about 122 chromatic metal. So I will go to my personal refiner, and I'll need about two. It'll take about 250 copper in order to make that, because copper is two to one. While that's busy cooking, let's just uh, walk around real quick here. Grab the blue cube. That replaces one of the navigation data we traded. These are the guys, all the guys with the weird looks are the ones you talk to to get the symbols for the portals. Now, I could have gotten that portal address, and I could have put it on the screen here to tell you where the portal was, but I didn't do that. I also like to... Um, if you don't mind my grabbing these, it's they're free. In fact, let's look in here real quick. 
There's one on the table. I have a V3 Atlas Pass. And with the V3 Atlas Pass at a lot of these space stations in these back rooms, you can grab some carbon. It's a way to get carbon without being on a planet, right? Without paying for it. In fact, if I have, um, no, all right, so we took enough there. If we can figure out how to get out of here. By the way, I'm using a backpack refiner for that. A class A, but you notice it doesn't have many storage spots. So what good is it if it hasn't got that many expansion slots? And notice there's a cube next to the starship guy. Now, they're not always there, but um, pretty often there's a cube next to that guy. Okay, so now we go to our technology, the personal refiner. We got the chromatic metal. So on the starship, the cadmium drive is now repaired. So I have my hyperdrive working, my photon cannons, which by the way, let me move the photon cannon here the pulse engine. I repair my shield. I like to have a shield and a weapon in case I get attacked. Um, my hyperdrive. Okay, so let me show you where we are. So I do X. Arrow over F to select the galaxy map. I I am 5,462 light years. You can see that in the upper left corner. So we went from around 700,000 light years. So we covered 655,000 light years in that time by using the portal. Now we're aiming for the galactic core. So I'll left click to see what we got. And I will select targeted system. If you don't mind, I will probably scan that planet. Magma, okay, X, arrow over F. We're now 4,483 light years from the center. Arrow left to, to set it on galactic core. I will right click 
to look and see if there's more planets. Okay, let's... I don't have an indium drive, but I can go to the stop before that. So I will go to the stop before that. When I land in a system, battle detected. So unfortunately, I got to stop and deal with this. All right, the red arrow points to the right, so I'm using W. Then I'm using shift to go quicker. There they are. Pointing at one of them, focusing on it. Focusing on the next one. And that guy is gone. All right, the arrow points down. There it is, the one with the red trail. Okay, two shots, did the job. Got some magnetized ferrite out of that. Follow them with the mouse and the WASD keys. Okay. He's on the other side of the freighter. I'm just gonna go away from the freighter on the side that he's on. Then I'm gonna turn around in his direction. There he is. They will often follow you away from the freighter. You see? And now I have a clear shot. And he's gone. So I let him come to me in that case. Now let's go to the next one, using the left shift key to go a little quick. Be careful you don't shoot the green people, because they're on your side. There are a lot of them here, but they're fairly easy. Okay, out of range, just follow the out of range. All right, I see the red, I go to W. I got one shot on him. All right, take your time, target him. There he goes. Now, um, the freighter will send a message to me. I'm gonna do X. F to answer the message. Viking warrior docking. The life form who must be the captain of this freighter looks greatly relieved. They gesture to welcome me aboard. I end the communication. So that navigational data is that black and white symbol. You see the black and white symbol there where the blue is? That is where you enter the freighter. So you want to maneuver your ship. 
so that you are coming in on the on that blue area use the W key you can go slowly and point yourself where you want to be at the reason I'm gonna go in here is I could use some replacement chromatic metal because I use that copper Okay, I used F just to look at the the ship. See uh, the space bar, the left shift to go quicker. Go in the center doors. Follow the symbol. When he speaks to me, I will tell him I want a reward, not the ship, and that will give you, I believe, a hundred and forty-six chromatic metal. That's a good amount of chromatic metal. It would take 300 copper to get that. So if you go to the trouble to defend the freighter, uh, you might as well get the free um, chromatic metal. So request payment, 146, I believe. No, 164. So that means you would have to get about 328 copper to get this so you tell me which would have been better uh, this does save a little bit of time at least with the chromatic metal because I'd have to land on a planet and use my terrain manipulator to get the copper then I'd have to cook it in my backpack All right, now again, X, arrow over to the right and F. I'm 3,908 miles from the center. Um, I arrow left to go to, Gala to get the path to the galactic core. Now, I think I'm going to need an emerald drive in order to do this. So, in order to get an emerald drive, I think I'm going to need to go... All right, well, let's go as close as we can, okay? And then we'll decide what to do from there. Well, no, we'll go... Yeah, we'll go to the last stop before there. Go as far as you can go with the drive that you have along the path to the galaxy center. Conflict level is trivial here. X, F. Let's see where it sends us um, for the galactic core. I, it looks like it's letting me go there. So let's do it. Okay. Now, tab... Tab. We are going to need antimatter housing. So we'll make 
I make warp cells. You want your warp drive to be full. So the hyperdrive, I'll need three to fill it up. Um, I'll make launch fuel in a minute and fill that up. The tritium for the pulse engine. I just like having everything full when I uh, when I do this. Okay, and I moved my photon cannon here. So now I do X, F. I arrow to galactic core. I left click. I'm going from Antinian GP, okay? Left click from Antinian GP, 2,839 light years from the center. Oh, I forgot to change my... Um, I forgot to change my multi-tool. All right, so we're going to be in a little bit of trouble here. At least I, uh, I know that the things on my suit, I have the ion battery stuff. So that will keep me alive long enough, my shields and the technology, to uh, repair the stuff on my multi-tool. So that's what we'll do. And we'll repair the basic life systems on the suit because they just take a little bit of ferrite dust. And then I will fill the ion battery and fix the um, basic visor to find the ship. All right, let's see what system it's going to take us to. All right, now I'm not thrilled about getting a black screen here. Adiwagiri. Adiwagiri is the next system. All right, I'll go as far as getting back to my spaceship safely, and then I will stop this video. So I would have at least the cadmium drive finished. Um, I like to keep the shields and one of my weapons. Okay, this is kind of nice, actually. All right, radiation. We will fix the life support. The jetpack, 50 ferrite dust. I think the life support was like 50 ferrite dust. Okay. A look at my technology. All right. Um, F, the visor is critically damaged. So go to the multi-tool. Click on the visor. I'll need a nanotube to fix that. So I make a carbon nanotubes. That takes some carbon. To make carbon nanotubes takes 50 carbon. And I repair my visor. I hit um, F. Now we should be able to see our plane. If you don't mind, there we go. And there, E to tag, is our plane.
So this is not going to be too difficult, actually. And then I'll begin to fix and repair my stuff. Uh, but I'll explore this galaxy, this universe a little bit. Actually, I should do this until I take off. So you can see I'm in a new universe. I see the red. Well, um, I can grab some stuff out of these containers. Because my Atlas Pass is in my cargo, the ex the high capacity, they did not get broken. I should probably grab some of this um, mining beam. Well, if I have toxic damage, I need to go to technology and add an ion battery. And my oxygen, I will make sure there's enough in there. On the multi-tool, I'm going to repair the mining beam with 30 ferrite dust to repair the mining beam. So I have the analysis, Pfizer, the mining beam. Uh, let's repair the scanner with 75 ferrite dust. Okay, so we have our basic things repaired here. Grab a little oxygen. I am on, by the way, I'm, we're in Miami, folks. Interesting. Oh, uh, Miami, eight, 17 in the Bun Inger system. All right. It's a plus that uh, the conflict level is low in this system. The first planet to me is often uh, like uh, an indication of how the system might be. The galaxy. So if the conflict level is low, uh, if the next couple have a low conflict level, then that will be a plus. If I find some exotic planets, paradise planets, then I know that this universe is a nice universe to be in. And then, then it would probably be worth exploring, because uh, a lot of there there'll be quite a few good planets. Notice I repaired the jetpack before doing this. Okay, let me grab whatever is in the damaged machinery and stuff. Throw that away. And you see, this is one of the ways I get navigation data. So there's many ways. You can always get plenty of navigation data for this stuff. These distress beacons always say the same thing. Broadcast received traveler anomaly detected. Anomaly compliant position log. System integrity scan initialized. There always seems to be some oxygen near the planet. Near the plane, near the crash plane.
Okay, first, the exosuit, I heard the warning message. I will throw another ion battery on that. I'm a 97 on the ion batteries. In the Starship, the launch thruster, one dihydrogen jelly, 50 pure ferrite, repair it. The pulse engine, I need a hermetic seal and I'll need a, a metal plating. Now the hermetic seal takes 30 condensed carbon. The metal plating takes 50 ferrite dust and that repairs the pulse engine. Now the shield takes 50 chromatic metal and 13 sodium nitrate. If I'm going to fly, it'd be nice to have a shield. And the chromatic metal, we got some from that um, freighter that we saved. He gave us like 160 uh, chromatic metal. And so now we have a deflector shield. So I'm going to go into outer space, go to the... I'll need three microprocessors, which I'll get at the space station and uh, for the hyperdrive, or I'll make it myself. And um, I'll show you what system we're in on the map. I'll land on the space station and uh, maybe scan a planet or two and then end the video. So if I do XF, I am 698,000. 223 light years from the galactic core of Odiwegiri. So you see, it always seems to put us roughly 700,000 light years away from the center of the uh, galaxy or the given universe. Okay, that was the planet I was just on, I guess. Uh, maybe I can get this planet scanned. Anytime I'm in a system, if I don't have time to land on a planet, I at least prefer to scan it if I can. See to scan. Planet of light. I believe that means the plants on the planet are giving off light. Not letting me scan that. And the space station is too close. But I fixed the shield and the other stuff. So even if we have a fight here, it shouldn't be too bad. So I'm going to wait and see how many of them there are. Two. Not too bad. So, you know what? I'll turn around and fight these guys. We've got a shield and a gun. The gun I put in the technology and the shield we repaired. There it is. Where are you at? Come on, come back. He's almost down. That's one down. And look, we got the chromatic metal back that we used to fix that item.
we increased our Gek standing as well. So we got chromatic metal and Gek standing. You know what? I need more, um... I need new tritium. Uh, you know, we can move the chromatic metal to the cargo. And we can move the gold to the cargo. And the platinum to the cargo. I just like a little more lemium. Tritium, I mean. And I'd like to be able to scan those planets. Now the tritium hyperclusters, if you analyze them, you see they increase the tritium. All right, that's probably good. Did we scan this planet? Why is it not letting us scan planets? All right, that's the planet of light. See? It's a noxious planet and a radioactive planet. All right, let me go to the space station and I'll end the video. And uh, that will be how to warp pretty completely from one system to the next system. Uh, within, I don't know, what did this video take? Maybe an hour? So there are 255 systems. And you can streamline what I just did a little bit. So that'll give you an idea of the number of hours it would take just to visit each one of the systems a little bit. So, um, four planets, two moons in this system. And you can call the anomaly in any universe. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you see how to do it.